So you press start and get into the game and the TV is like, there's a red Gyarados rampaging around lakes. Everyone stay indoors. Then you head outside and your neighbor Barry is like, come on, let's go catch a Gyarados. So the two head to Lake Verity, but there's no red Gyarados. And some old dude is like, okay, let me just accidentally leave behind my suitcase. Hopefully no one opens it and starts their wondrous Pokemon journey. So the kids rob the professor and you get to choose between three different Pokemon to steal. There's a turtle, a penguin, or a monkey that's on fire. Holy sh- So I picked the turtle. And the assistant shows up and is like, I'm calling the police. I'll be seeing you two in court. So you go home to your mother who's like, here's some running shoes. You'll be needing them to run from the police. You then head to the professor's lab, but he's like, actually, you can keep it. And here, take these Pokeballs in a Pokedex. All you need to do for me is collect data on every single Pokemon in existence. So you head to the next route and the assistant is like, hey, wanna watch me catch a Pokemon? I'll take your silence as a yes. Dun, 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 dun. Oh man, it would be nice if there's a skip option right about now. In the next city, you meet Looker, this really cool investigator guy that, wait, Looker's not in the game? You mean they remade Diamond and Pearl and not Platinum? Oh, Pokemon, oh, Pokemon. Assistant is like, hey, your team's looking a bit cringe. How about you go learn a thing or two at the Pokey Preschool? So you go to Pokey Preschool and Barry is like, I can't read. Then you have to find three clowns and go get a watch and leave town. But Barry stops you like, oh, yeah, I'm never going to lose a Pokemon battle because I caught a Starly. So you beat his Starly and go into the nearby cave, but there's some rocks in the way. And the hiker who I guess lives here is like, Oh, you need this TM for Rock Smash, but you don't actually need to teach your Pokemon Rock Smash. You just need to go beat the rock type gym leader Brock, I, I mean Rourke, to obtain his gym badge. Then you can summon a Bidoof who will smash the rock for you. This game mechanic has made less and less sense as the series has gone on. Afterwards, you return to Jubilife City where some guys in matching bowl cuts are trying to rob the professor. The kids fight them off and the assistant is like, yeah, they were trying to steal Rowan's data on Pokemon evolution. You know, the data that says that 90% of Pokemon are tied to evolution. Don't say that out loud. I spent 20 years figuring that out. It's at this point that you can visit an elderly couple and if you've purchased the last two Pokemon games, they will just straight up give you Jirachi and Mew for free. So your team after the first gym will be like Turtwig, Starly, Bidoof, Jirachi, and Mew. Moving towards Floroma Town, you run into more bowl cut dudes who are attempting to rob another old man for his honey so they can slather it on trees and use it to attract Pokemon. And by Pokemon, I mostly mean combies. So you follow them back to their HQ and meet one of their leaders who's like, I'm one of the three admins of Team Galactic. There's me, Mars, then there's Jupiter, and lastly, Saturn. It's convenient that all of our parents named us after planets. You battle her and win, and she's like, All right, boys, let's abandon HQ. I just lost a Pokemon battle to a child. One of the captured scientists tells you that Team Galactic is trying to create a new universe, and that hopefully someone can stop them, ideally someone who just left home two days ago. Afterwards, you enter Eterna Forest, and a hippie girl is like, Can you take me across the forest? There's, a, there's people with intimidating bowl cuts up ahead. So you take her and her fat chancy across the forest, and then get approached by another lady who's like, Here, take this compact disc. You'll be needing it to teach your turtle how to cut things. But you can only use cut after you've beaten the Eterna City gym leader. It's at this point that you can dig a totally not dangerous hole in the middle of the city to Sinnoh's underground, where between all the overleveled Geodudes and Zubats, you may find that super rare Pokemon that'll balance out your team. But it'll take a freaking Master Ball to catch these things because they break out of any Pokeball that you throw at them. Or maybe I'm just unlucky, that could be true. So you battle Gardenia the gym leader and hey, she has a Turtwig too? but only I'm supposed to have a turret wig. Now it's not cool anymore. After obtaining the badge, you're able to cut down the small tree that's guarding the Galactic HQ. And at the top, you fight another Galactic Commander and her fire-breathing skunk, eventually defeating them. And she's like, oh, by the way, our boss is investigating mythical lake Pokemon. 
Just thought that you should know. Alright everyone, let's abandon the building. A child has just beaten me in a Pokemon battle. The captured bicycle shop owner gives you a bicycle which you can use to stroll down cycling road. Until the assistant stops you and is like, Look at all this junk, I, I mean key items that I found. Here, you take them so I don't have to carry them around anymore. You then enter a cave where there's a creepy blue-haired guy monologuing about how bad humanity is. So you move onward to Heart Home City, where you find the city's contest hall, and inside is your mother, and she gives you a hand-me-down contest outfit, so you can finally live your idle dreams with your Bidoof. The town's gym leader is on lunch break, so you travel to Veilstone City, where the assistant is loitering around town like, Look at all the cool stuff I bought at the convenience store. Uh, oh, the, uh, the Pokedex Professor Rowan wanted us to complete? I totally didn't lose it. You then battle the gym leader Maylene and probably lose because her Lucario is broken. And back outside, the assistant is like, Okay, I lost my Pokedex, and you need to help me get it back. So you battle a few galactic grunts who can't beat two children who just got their first Pokemon three days ago, and they give back their Pokedex. Next, you travel down to Pastoria Town to battle their gym leader, and hey, finally a type advantage, this game was getting way too hard. Outside, there's a galactic grunt who's like, Come, follow me for the plot. But then Barry's like, No time for that, bro, it's time for our weekly battle. Look, my Starly's almost ready to evolve halfway through the game. So you beat Barry Starly and chase the Galactic Grunt towards the plot cave, and inside there's some cave paintings and Cynthia's grandmother is like, Long, long ago, there were three spirits that fought against a being so powerful there. And then Cyrus is like, Yes, it's true. I plan to create a new universe because this one is too tainted by emotions. So if you happen to find a way to create a new universe, just let me know. At this point, you can finally take on the Heart Home City Gym Challenge, the challenge being to solve basic math like what's 2 plus 7, and then play a game of flip the coin of whether or not your Pokemon will smack themselves in confusion. Outside the gym, Cynthia is waiting and is like, Wasn't that conversation with my grandmother interesting? If you want more lore, then go to the Canalave library and read some books. So you do as the blonde woman says and enter Canalave City, where Barry's like, Oh yeah, baby, you know what time it is. And my Starly finally evolved. So you beat his Staravia and he's like, You may have won every battle we've had so far without losing a single Pokemon, but I'm still gonna be the Pokemon champion. Yeah, okay, Barry, we believe you. After battling Brock's dad and obtaining the sixth gym badge, you head to Canalave Library, where Rowan and the assistant are waiting. And Rowan tells the three to search three separate lakes to find three mythical spirit Pokemon that Team Galactic are after. But then a big explosion happens and the professor is like, Uh, I think that happened at your lake, so tough luck. At Lake Valor, you find that the whole lake is well, no longer a lake, and Commander Saturn, like most RPG villains, starts revealing Galactic's whole evil plot to capture all three spirits of the lakes, and use their power to create a new universe. So you rush to Lake Verity, but Mars is like, you're too late, we've already transported the lake spirit to HQ. Darn it. Alright, now go to Lake Aquity and check on Barry. It's only halfway across the country, so it should take, uh, maybe 30 minutes, tops. After trudging through the cold snow in only a t-shirt, you reach Snowpoint City, and take the opportunity to battle the city's gym leader because, hey, there's no real hurry. Afterwards, you reach Lake Aquity and Jupiter is like, You're too late. We've already transported the lake spirit to our HQ. Man, hopefully you didn't run all the way here just to hear me say that. Anyways, definitely don't come to our HQ, which is in Veilstone City, by the way. At Veilstone Galactic HQ, you find Cyrus, who's like, You're too late. I bet you're tired of hearing that line by now. I've already sapped the legendary lake Pokemon of their Pokey Juice and turned it into a fashionable bracelet, which can be used to control Sinnoh's creator. If you still want to save the world, then follow me to the top of Mount Cornet. I will wait patiently to rewrite the universe until after you've gotten there. Also, here's a Master Ball, because I like you so much. 
So you free the dried up lake spirits and reach the top of Mount Coronet, where Cyrus uses the Red Shackle to imprison Dialga or Palkia, depending on your version, who he controls to begin the destruction of the universe, and Cyrus is like, Now I can create a new universe with no needless emotions, and I can be God. And at this point, I imagine the commanders are like, Hey, why were we following this guy again? But then Barry shows up, and he's like, Hey guys, what'd I miss? And you two battle the commanders in a double battle, where Barry leads with a Munchlax of all Pokemon, thank you Barry, really giving it your all in this battle to decide the fate of the universe. And the two win, but it's too late and Dialga has finished creating the new universe. Barry is like, alright you've got this covered from here, bye! Thankfully the lake spirits show up and just nope away the galaxy for you. Cyrus is like, well, guess I'll just capture Dialga then. Uh, wait, where'd I put my master ball again? Uh, oh. Alright, you win this round. Thankfully, prison doesn't exist in the Pokemon universe, so I guess I'll just run off with no real repercussions for my actions. Bye. Afterwards, you head to Sunny Shore City where some dude with an afro is like, The gym leader is totally bummed out and needs a tough battle to break him out of it. I can't help with that. I'm only one of the members of the strongest team of trainers in the whole region, so you'll have to do it for me. So you battle Volkner and obtain your 8th and final gym badge and head outside where Jasmine from Pokemon Gold and Silver and Crystal and Heart Gold and Soul Silver is here, I, I guess, and gives you the HM for Waterfall, meaning that you can ride the waves up to the Pokemon League and take on the Elite Four. But Barry stops you at the entrance like, Not so fast, buddy. Check it out, my Staravia is finally a Staraptor. What Pokemon have you caught? Oh. Dialga. <laughs> so you enter through the league doors and challenge the not very memorable Sinnoh Elite Four to reach the very much remembered Sinnoh Champion Cynthia, and after like five times of blacking out to her Garchomp, you finally bring enough Hyper Potions to defeat her and become the Sinnoh League Champion, thus accomplishing your life's goal by the humble age of 10. The end. If you have a game or a series that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then you could leave it in the comments below, and I'll try to get to it when I can. You could also subscribe, you don't have to, but you could. And that's it. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.